Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Insomnia 62. We are here for the Blitzkrieg Open Championships, and we are here for Penta versus Endpoint in the Losers mm -hmm. Bracket Final. We are going to get to see the winner of this on the main stage tomorrow on Sunday at 3 p.m. Make sure to tune in for that, but we are already into the action here. Looks as though Mitch couldn't quite join the spectate, so he's had to kill himself. But there we go. We are good. We're heading into the game. And ooh, Frost has already got the opening with the nade kill to start this round. You can see Replan picking up the sniper, as does Icons. That's going to be much more common on Coastal with a pretty open mid position to try and utilize. And there it is. Penta starting things off with a man advantage on their ally's side. Indeed, Saint getting taken out very early on in the round. Things looking good for Penta. They've had a little bit of a break to discuss what potentially went wrong previously. Let's see what they can pull together now. Penta seem to be gravitating towards the A site, but that's where the majority of the endpoint players are. Well, it is going to be Penta slowly but surely pushing in towards A. Endpoint have a couple of players already committed to that bomb site. Push should be coming in shortly. It's Iger to get one up close with the shotgun. J Money holding gets the first. No trade coming in as well, so J Money can continue to lock down this position. And elsewhere, it's going to be sus to give his team the man advantage. He's going to be traded on, but as the push comes in, oh, Jay Money not going to be able to get the kill through. He doesn't react in time. I think the timing was slightly off for him there. He didn't expect that push to come in. So that means it will be Icons trying to peek round. Oh, he connects the shot. Pistol out. One shot is all he needs. But in comes the quick trade from Replan, peeking with the shotgun. And Penta, off the back of that opening pick with the nade, get their first round. Indeed, and looking good. That's going to be a first round on the Allied side. Endpoint going to be looking to trade that back. Saint Six falling fairly on in the fairly early on in the round. Has managed to pick up a shotgun, and so he might have been pretty key in the previous round if he could have been able to push towards the mid house, the red house. We appear to have another spec book. Yeah, going to have to get that one sorted. Indeed. There we go. Icons so shortly. will be Replan with the sniper. One for Icons as well. One minute 26. Still no kills to start this second round. And I believe Mitch should be back in the server. So hopefully we will get that all sorted. And I don't think you'll miss any action as Icons is just falling back. J Money again on the site. We've seen him play here consistently. Let's see if he can do the damage. This time with the car. We saw him play there with SDG in the past. It is going to be already the first kill to come in from Sus. Endpoint get the man advantage. Oh, and Sus gets another kill. That was a jumping shot that he just landed. Again, you can't see it, but trust me, Sus has got two kills through. It's a five versus three in favor of Endpoint. Extended further. Only one Penta player left and still no kill for them. So this is going to be the Axis side taking a flawless round as Replan just fell off the map. You didn't get to see it, but he fell off the map. Oh, I'm playing again. Get out of there. Let's get the spectator just in there time. We go. We're good to go again. Sorry about the last two rounds. We've had spectator bugs coming in. Something seems to have gone wrong. Try to fix that for tomorrow. We should be sorted for then. Anyways, moving forward. 1-1 one, one now the score. As Endpoint have managed to pick up a round. Penta on their allied side, of course. On the map of Liberation, I'd expect them to gain about five rounds. Sus has picked up a wall bang onto Pukas. I think anything less than five rounds is going to be pretty detrimental. Anything more is going to be good. Five just right about average. End point if they can finish this with seven. This half with seven. It won't be great. And it won't be terrible. A lot of poking around going on by Penta. They're looking for a kill over towards the B site where they've got three players stacked up. But nothing just yet. It's going to be Ega getting taken down pretty low. A shotgun still in play on the, the site. And look at that. Replan and Ega taking kills. The bomb now picked up. A three versus three. Turned into a three versus two all of a sudden. And the spray they're not going to land from Fancy. It's all on Jay Money. And that round falling apart. 
for Endpoint. You hate to see it, but you can't look away. Jay Money got to find himself a 3K moving back onto this side. He's got about 30 seconds to do so. Raplan not going to be able to connect that shot, but neither is Jay Money, so it's not going to matter too much for Penta. The smoke coming in, that's going to be house smoked out. And he finds the kill into the hallway. That's opening it up a little bit. They're going to be worried about the stick now, but be careful because you're being pushed behind. Oh, the knife oh. kill from Jay. He's managed to pick up a grand with 18 seconds. He has time to win this. He's going to go for the defuse. Is he going to stick it, though? That is the question. It doesn't appear so. He's going to get closer to Replan here. And here comes him. No! The UI! Oh, no! The gun model getting in the way. He doesn't see Replan pushing down the stairs. That is so unfortunate. Almost a beautiful clutch from Jay Money. So unlucky to lose that. And Penta claiming another round. That's going to be 2-1. As they're looking pretty good on their allied side. Yeah, going to be again the two snipers in play. One for Replan, one for Icons. And it looks like we are again, again. going to try and get these technical issues sorted. So it is Penta with the 2-1 lead on their ally side as well. That's certainly a strong start for them. We are already seeing into this round not too much go down there we go you are in so we should be back into the action and oh sus already getting the first kill through that was over towards coastal i believe so a quick opening kill coming in and oh sus gets a second well played by him the nade comes through but he just about avoids it j money also finds another entry so endpoint looking good they get the 4v2 advantage and as Iger goes down the chance at this round goes even slimmer <coughs> roster has to win a 1v4 yeah, it's looking good for the Axis. Froster with the SMGs up close. He's facing off against the pistol. Not going to land those shots. He gets shot in the back by Jay Money. And 2-2 now the score. End point. Evening it out a bit. A nice time for them. And it looks like Fancy is going to be taking that STG. We're going to see a nade, of course, coming along with that. And a nade in the hands of Fancy. Means a five versus three starting out the round. Almost. Almost guaranteed. That's the fancy guarantee. Let's see what he can manage with that. We'll keep an eye on him as he moves over towards the B side with that, where we've seen him capitalize with two kills. I think against Penta as well it was in the best of one. Possibly against a different team. He's done it quite a lot, actually. And the first kill goes in favor of Sus. That's the Axis picking up two kills. Hey, is falling. Fancy looking for another. He's not going to find it, and he's going to back off now. Not giving away that man advantage. The two-man advantage that they've played since. Spots are moving on the side, and Replan taking a kill on the Icons pretty quickly. Two players still on the side, though. They'll probably only expect one. And chat saying, who is Dark? Come on. Come on, man. Dark's the best producer in ice in, ins in Insomnia right now. Well, we're going to see Penta trying to push in towards B. Frosto was looking to open things up, but he's just given away his position. I can allow the rest of his teammates to push forwards. It's a clear close right, though. This could get dicey. Push coming in, and Fancy has the STG, so not the best weapon for this position. As this push comes forwards, it's Cinder to take him down. And there goes Replan with another kill through. So there go Penta, overwhelming that A bomb site. Oh, sorry, that B bomb site. The bomb will go down, but J Money pushing in. Ooh, misses the second shot. Quickly back to a 2v2. And as the bomb has been planted, Endpoint are going to try and push their way back forwards. You can see one player hiding behind Statue on the site. That's Cinder holding that one off, but it's Saint Six with the shotgun who gets the first frag through. And Cinder has to try and hold them both off. He can try and play around the statue, but Jay Money again is so quick on the trigger. Nothing Cinder can do. He gets taken down, and Endpoint will be able to claw their way back into the lead on this Axis side. Whew. 3 2 Endpoint taking a one round lead. Jay Money with a good shot there coming back into it clutching it pretty well he did a good job of not re-peaking when he was low hp that's something that some players have been doing they've allowed their health to regen past the part where the screen is red but that's only about 45 or 50 hp they then go for battles and get taken down pretty easily from spams a good nade by fancy surely going to claim one at least 
No, it's not quite gonna land. We're still gonna see a 5v5, but the bomb has been dropped, indicating there's some sort of aggression from the allies. Indeed, there is aggression. J Money spotting Sin pushing in to the Oh no, Aegis has also fallen. Sin is trapped in middle as well as Jay is watching that. With the car 98, he's pushed back though as Froster pushes up towards mid statue. And now a lot of angles to be worried about by an endpoint, but Penta. Pretty much trapped at the moment. A lot of their players being spotted. Jay Money doesn't manage to land that shot, unfortunately, but it is going to be Sus finding Sind. And Repland and Frost are the last two alive. Things not looking too good for Penta. It's looking like this might be a fourth round now for Endpoint. Yeah, Replan taking the time to regen up. Even though he has that sniper, he wants to make sure he has the best possible chance to win this long range fight. J Money on the other side, pretty consistently has played that position in the past, but we'll have to see if Penta are aware of that themselves. In the 2v5, it's not going to matter too much in this round. It's also worth mentioning, Endpoint also picked Coastal earlier in the day against Avenue. Despite losing that previous series, they managed to get the win there. I think it was 13-5 or 13-6 in the end. It was a very convincing win on that second map. So clearly, Endpoint big fans of Coastal. They have this one prepared, but... It looks as though that will be working for them as well because they're going to gain a 4-2 lead. Penta looking to hold on to the one sniper card for Replan. You can see Endpoint pushing forwards, but I don't think they're going to get into Replan's position in time. And Froster doesn't have anything too worrisome. Gets one kill, but that's not going to be too relevant. It's all about the save, which will occur. So there you go. At least the save into the next round, but still doesn't feel great for them considering... They are going to be behind. I mean, Endpoint certainly have been better on the Axis side, though. So this is kind of an expected lead for them to come out ahead in towards this one, especially on their own map pick. It's just a question of how many rounds Penta can get. Yeah, indeed. I mean, they are going to be hoping for at least five, I think. Five, seven. Like I said before, it's a pretty even havoc with Replan taking icons down. That's going to be feeding well into this round. The one man advantage there is that Replan going up to a very familiar position. He's been here before and managed a lot from there. Oh, J Money not expected in that position. Sus has also picked up a kill as J Money is looking for the kill towards Coastal. Almost finding it. Ooh, missing the second as well. He's not going to re peek that now. It's a little bit risky as they will be watching it more than likely. He's looking for the push up into the house. Needs to be careful. Oh, what? Um, Replan? Just died off the map, I believe. He didn't just fall off the map, did I he? I think he just fell off the map. Oh, no. The players are typing in chat and laughing, so yes. Yeah, apparently it's, it's very slippery. Slippery. Though. That's what he's <laughs> saying. I mean, either way, it is going to be bad for Penta. Oh, it's no. Cinder, the only man left. I mean, it's. I know it's late in the day, but you can't be walking off the map. Come on now. Cinder left in a 1v3 because of that mistake. And unfortunately for Replan, I mean, this round was unlikely anyway, but they were only at the one-man disadvantage. It could have been doable, especially as he had the sniper in play. So I guess that card won't be recovered at least. But here we go. Cinder trying to take a fight. Yeah, he's got too many angles to work against. So Endpoint starting to put together a nice little win streak here. A 5-2 lead into their favor. And there are still sniper guards on the Penta side, so not a massive deal. They still have two of those left. That's something that Endpoint don't have to work with. So the fact that he died off the map means that Endpoint can't get the sniper card back. They can't get a sniper into this round, I guess. I guess that's the, the small positive you take. <laughs> I suppose that is a small positive, <laughs> all right. But I think they're going to be pretty happy with the, uh, the easy one-man pick. But Raplan is doing a lot of work with that sniper when he's not swimming. And it looks like he'll be risking it, moving towards Coastal yet again. Twenty-five percent of his deaths being to that water. Good math, sir. Thank you. Quick, quick math. What a nade straight onto yeah. Cinder. And characteristic of Fancy to hit those nades. I think if we gotta give a nade award, it's gonna be Fancy. Yeah, definitely. Consistency with the nades as well. Duke is going to get another entry, so Penta just pretty much winning every single fight here. Sus is going to be able to get one kill in response. It's not a massive response, though, because there are still three players left saying, come at me, and I don't <laughs> think Sus will be coming anytime oh soon. God. He's going to try and make his way back towards that site. 
Goes for the spam, but not the best gun to do this with. I've noticed generally players aim just a little bit high. Yeah. And the plant is generally a line. Oh, yes. There you go, just a little bit to the left. Plant is generally made lying down on the A side, and players seem to always aim just above the head when they spam it. Oh, spotted out is Replan. He gets the tank, though. That's going to delay the push from Sus a little bit. And, I mean, look at Froster. He's sitting on the stairs with a shotgun. Very hard to combat that, but if Replan does fall here, it's going to be a whole lot easier. Oh, Sus jumping in, attempts to take the shotgun on, and that's not going to end well, especially after he's just been tagged. Best option was probably to take Replan and then try to make the tank jump in. But he's not going to manage any of that, and it's going to be two men left alive on the Penta side as they claim another round. Replan picking up that sniper again. Penta mainly just getting that round thanks to winning a couple of those opening exchanges. Endpoint then were on the back foot. They were forced to rotate over. And we'll get to see if Penta can win those opening engagements again here. Play coming out towards mid. Those smokes, as always, coming in. Pretty consistently we're seeing those be deployed around that statue area. Bomb being dropped, but ooh, Froster gets one. Elecons gets one back. The nades going even. One for each side. So that's a decent start. And you can see Replant up onto that tree will be able to deny J Money if he plays into that position on the A site. But J Money playing in towards mid, then that's not going to work out for him. Froster gets his second of the round, the first with the nade, of course. So a man advantage for Penta. Endpoint, though, have two players over towards B. So it's only Saint on the A site. And Fancy and Icons, I think, might have to get aggressive over towards B or rotate over quickly. Icons may be thinking about the rotate as we speak, but Penta, they're just taking their time as well. They don't have to go for the push here. Even though Saint is the only player towards A, he has that shotgun, so he very well could still do damage. He also has that smoke in play. As we see here at Plant, take a tiny bit of full damage. Not going to be anything too important. Here we go, though. Again, Saint with that shotgun. He's the only player on this A site. He has a smoke as well, but can he hold this off? All down, down to that first pick, he manages to get it now. He's in a great position. Oh, no. He's oh. oh, almost caught with the smoke in hand. Just about manages to throw it down in time to pull out the shotgun. And now in a fantastic position. As he can really just play time here. Ten seconds left. The bomb plant has to come in. Covered. He's actually gone down as well. He's just going to wait for his teammates, though. This is a basic retake coming in. The tank jump from Fancy, but it can be backed up by Saint. They're going to push in together and find the kill towards the back of the site. There's another! Oh. And Saint going huge with a 4k. That shotgun on the site being used very efficiently. Bomb defused. Yeah, Saint there always looked in control of the situation. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. Waits for Fancy to come and help him out. And Endpoint managed to get up to a sixth round on the board. So heading into round 10, you can see Jay Money and Sus doing a lot of the work alongside Saints for the endpoint side. Those three really standing out from the pack. Saints in particular has also only died three times. Considering they've only lost three rounds, that's pretty impressive from him. And we are going to see the weapon choices come through. Replan still has that sniper in play. I see a couple of nades going towards mid. Replan trying to see if he can find an angle. The smokes are currently up. It's Jay Money on the other side to see if he can get anything done, but the nade lands in the face of Saint. That shotgun is going to be picked up by Jay Money, but it's not going to be used by Saint because he's already out of this round. And with a man advantage, Penta have done pretty well so far at closing out these rounds. So from this 5v4, they will much prefer their chances. Indeed, Sin picking up one kill. That's going to be a 5 versus 3 at the moment. Things getting a little bit dicey now. It's going to be a four versus two. Look at this from Sus. He's just picking everybody off until he's pushed in the back by Pukas. It's all going to be down to icons now. And this is looking very good for Penta in this round. Icons has to pull off a one versus three. We'll get him a 3k. With Pukas. Oh, getting caught out in the statue now. Two 1v1s to be found. A good nade. Oh, actually not a good nade. It doesn't even go into the site. Replan being spotted out. Icon's not going to be able to follow up. And things not looking great now as he's going to be pushing in. His position spotted out. Raplan missing the no scope. I think. Oh. He does spot Icon's moving in towards the site and it will be Froster taking him down. So 
There we go. Another round on the board for Penta. Seems like whoever gets that first kill oftentimes has a massive advantage in these rounds. And that time it was Penta who closed out the round win. A little bit close towards the end, but always in control of the position. Saint has that shotgun in play again. So he'll look to get up close and hope this time not to take a nade to the face. As we see this 11th round come into play. We're already into the late stages of this half, but it's replan to open things up with the sniper. And as I was just saying, whoever gets the first kill oftentimes has a huge advantage in the round. That being said, Fancy's already got a couple of kills back. It's Jay Money who gets another one. So M point, bring it back into a man advantage. It's quick trades across the map. Back into a three versus three, but Iger is so isolated here. Even if he gets one kill, he could be in trouble, and that's not going to come through. He ends up going down. Icons and Fancy just about win their individual fights. And Replan, even though he got the first kill with the sniper, needs three more frags. On 20 HP, he should just be playing safe for now. We did see him previously, I think, purposefully throw himself off the map on an earlier round that we didn't see to ensure that sniper card wasn't recoverable. But he's going to go for this one into this round 11. Certainly understandable. I don't think the cards are going to be too relevant at this late stage in the half. And replan with that SMG, hoping that someone pushes in. Well, someone does push in, but he doesn't expect it. So endpoint with their seventh round on the board. And if they can get their eighth, I think they're in really good shape. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if Penta can manage to get this, though, and bring it to 7-5, it's not going to look too good for either team, really. Penta will be moving onto the Axis side where they've got the advantage, but endpoint with the round lead. It would kind of balance out. But the eighth round for Endpoint would be very bad for Penta, especially as Endpoint already have one map. If they can manage to spread the gap a little bit further in the opening rounds of the next half, Penta may start to get a little bit demotivated. But let's see what we've got coming in, as it looks like it's going to be a B push. Icons rotating around. Meanwhile, it's going to be fancy. And Sus holding off. Sus has already spotted one on the cross. He's going to tag him pretty heavily. That's going to be an easy kill for Fancy. And no, it's not actually. Sus and Fancy falling almost straight away. Almost in sync. It's all on icons here. He's the only player holding off against this push. All five players on the site. Now the bomb has gone down. Oh, okay. Sid leaning into the bush there. Three versus three unfolding. As Jay and icons pick up kills. It's going to be Saint. Backing up Icons with a shotgun. The smoke coming over now. Not too sure where that's going to land. Oh, the shotgun not able to capitalize on that kill. It's going to be the sniper rifle pushing down on the hands of Icons. He's not going to be able to get that kill either. And now 7-5. Looking good for both teams. Moving in to the next half. Pretty quick push coming in from Penta there towards that site to close out that first half. And now we will get to see what Penta have in store for us heading into their Axis side. There we go, round 13, the first round of this second half. And Replan already deciding to go for the sniper, as does Icon. So we're going to see those sniper battles come back into effect. Haven't really seen too many of them being taken so far because Icon has been shying away from that sniper. But you can see him right now peeking in towards mid. Looks like he's going to get too much of a fight. There's a couple of nades come in. Neither of them doing really too much damage. And you can see not many nades left on either side now. So it's mainly just up to making sure they can get the trades, making sure they can get the openings. Replan could be able to do so. I don't think he's quite going to spot this player through the leaves. This is pretty close, but... I don't think it's going to happen. So with a little over a minute left on the clock, still no real damage being done. Endpoint, though, I've got a couple of players pushed up over towards A, but they're spreading out across the map, which we've seen fairly often from them. And again, still no kill. Time ticking down. Sus did spot... Sus was spotted out, rather, by Replan as he moved back towards the connector area. That's going to indicate that it is an A push, and Replan going to rotate around towards A. Now, going to be pretty difficult if they decide to push through to the back of the A site. As Replan is there with the sniper rifle. Backed up by Sid with the STG. Jay Money looking for kills towards Broken Wall. Not going to find anything just yet. But there's Icons with a nice headshot. With the sniper rifle. The shotgun will be pushing in first. Dying to Aga. Oh. Aga getting a 2k. Not good for the third as he has to reload. And another kill coming in for Sind. Two versus two with that trade. 
Oh, you need to be careful though because Sind is in the bottom of sight. He's pushing up now. The shotgun going to find the kill onto him, and it's all on replan. Two kills to find with a sniper rifle. Oh, I didn't notice the time was so low. He had to stick that plant on the side actually. Going for that kill cost them the round. Well played by Replan, staying alive there in the back of the site. And now that gap closing a little bit more. It's going to be 7 to 6. So there's some discussion in chat about the smoke in towards stairs there, which I think is confusing some of the players. So I'm sure they're fine. I think they've got it sorted out now. But yeah, there's a, there's the one-way smoke that's not allowed and then just the normal smoke, which is. By the way, going to be heading back into the action. It is going to be already Cinder to open things up with his nade. That Saint taken down at the early stages of this one. Aegir doesn't have the shotgun this time, but he is still playing up close on towards the A site, peeking out in towards mid. Looks as though M1 again are trying to spread out, trying to just play for picks. He comes in. Oh, Sus needs to get that kill, but the nade connects on towards him. That was a pivotal fight there. Icons needs this shot, but it's not going to happen for him. Replan winning the duel of those snipers. And J Money and Fancy are going to have to win a heroic round at this point in a one versus five now because Fancy has already fallen. J Money spots the first player overextending a little bit. Flicks back around trying to spot Replan, but he's got so many angles to clear. Flicking around all over the place here. J Money hoping that he can get a lucky kill or two. He also has to get the bomb, which has been dropped over towards B, though. And you can see he's moving towards this position. But Penta obviously aware of this. Crosser spots him out. Second player coming in. It's replaying with the sniper, missing the shot. But with 26 seconds left, this round is pretty much done. And 22 seconds. He's not going to be able to get onto that side and plan. He has to find himself two kills before he can even do that. And never mind finding two kills. His replan is holding that with the sniper rifle, and he won't even be able to get near the site. And we're seeing Icons once again taking up the sniper rifle, possibly going to stray away from B. The problem with how Penta are playing B at the moment, having tied at 7 7, is that they're going to have the player up on top of that truck being smoked off pretty easily. Just one smoke needs to come in. A good nade from Fancy. Not going to land anything unfortunately. But yeah, one nade needs to, one smoke needs to come in on that cross and that blocks him off completely. Sin getting the opening kill. And popping up on top of the barrels before being taken out. A little bit aggressive. Needlessly aggressive almost. As we now move over towards middle where the allies have started to take control but be careful, Froster, pushing all the way through B. He needs to make sure he doesn't push too much more, or he's going to find himself in a very difficult situation. And why he's going to walk right into a Fancy, who's holding that. Well, end point still a little bit indecisive on where they want to end up in this round. Fancy with the bomb is the furthest player back, but Sus has already pushed pretty aggressively here, so J Money is going to follow him up. Sus is actually getting all the way into the back lines. Replank could be in trouble with his sniper. It's Jay Money to take the first fight, but Sus is coming in from behind. There goes the kill with the SMG. Iger going to get one kill through with that shotgun, and with 28 seconds left, he's going to try and lock down that choke point. Replank, though, surely in trouble. There's no way he expects this. The kill comes in from Jay Money. 20 seconds now. The push has to come in this 3v2. They managed to jump up onto the site. So Aga on the stairs needs to do the damage. One kill, two kills, nearly the third. But the trade comes out. And it's J Money 1v1. There's no time. Six seconds. He has to play for the kill here. J Money going to push him down. Needs this shot. Doesn't connect. And there is no time. It's not going to be the round for endpoint. They just can't get the round wins. Oh, okay, a cheeky knife at the end. Doesn't really mean too much, though. The round was already over, and it's Penta into the lead now. Yeah, the advantage going to Penta, 8-7. They are on their Axis side as well. So Endpoint, having not won a single round so far on their Allied side, going to be looking to pick things up pretty soon if they want to be able to chance to close this out without going to map number three. 1-0 already for them, of course. They need to change things up a little bit. Been playing quite slow and getting picked off and dying because of time there. Well, at the start of this round, Cinder took a lot of damage from a nade, but he's not going to be taken out, so not a big problem. 
Endpoint, though, are going to try to stick together this time. We've seen them consistently spread out, try to work for opening frags. That's not worked. They're going to push together as a unit, look to get the trade kills in, and Replank gets annihilated. Foster up close, gets a double. The shotgun needs more, though he needs to slow them down. Push coming in towards him. Froster stuck in the corner, does get the tag, but not going to be the kill. Sus actually finds three on those entries, and it's going to be Aegir trying to rotate over with just the shotgun in hand. So Endpoint sticking together works well well for them as they get the trades on towards that B bomb site. Mainly Sus though making the difference, finding a couple of entries as well as ensuring that shotgun player ended up falling. And I at least upgrades to the STG to give him a better chance. Spray coming in. Oh, there we go. A free kill onto Icons who stayed on the site. Back into a one on two. No trade. Oh, Wager oh. nearly gets that one. The shotgun coming out for him again. He loves that shotgun, but Sus shuts him down with the 4k in the end he's stepping up for endpoint in that round but they've still got a pretty long way to go that's a little bit unfortunate seeing a round like that unfold sus having to get a 4k in order for the win to come in for endpoint things getting a little bit closer than they needed to there three versus one coming down to a 1v1 with the bomb down a lucky spam, I suppose, from Aiga, and a very good read to expect there to still be a player on the side. I mean, he gave away his position with that spam, and that very well could have lo lost him the round if there wasn't a player there. And picking up two kills, though, more than I think you could expect from him in that position. Yeah, so we see Endpoint find success when they stick together in that round. And this time they might look to go for the exact same thing, but Froster with this shotgun going to get aggressive. Safe on the other side, jumps in and takes him down. That's Froster already falling, and that B site now looks vulnerable. It's up to Replan to try and see if he can find a kill on this boosted position, trying to see if he can land a shot. Ooh, Spray comes in from Cinder. That's a sneaky angle to get a kill back. Into a 4v4. Endpoint don't commit to the push fully. And Replan did get another kill in there. So a man advantage goes the way of Penta after Endpoint get the first kill. It seemed like Endpoint just didn't fully commit to that push. Saint has now got his way onto the site, but there's no way they can confidently get the bomb down here. And as the time ticks away, they're going to need another kill at least to feel confident enough to get that bomb plant in. Well, maybe not. Fancy going to go for it. And there's no push from Penta, so he will be allowed that plant. And that puts Endpoint in an okay position. But this this B site, it's quite hard to get into really strong positions. As you can see, Fancy having to play close with the shot. Here. What a shot by Icons. The advantage here being that the Axes have to push into them, but Puka's picking up a nice kill on the site. Oh my god, Saint-6 going huge there. Knife kill coming out as well. It's going to be all on Pukas. He's got to find himself the 3k. He's already taken down Saint-6, and he can go for the defuse here. 20 seconds remaining. Icon's gotten himself a good position. Close barrels. Pukas really has to go for this defuse. He's spotted out. Icon's now knows that he's not sticking it. He needs to play this a bit safer. I'm just not expected by Pukas that angle. <laughs> he's doing a dance on the site, trying to spot out the player. And it's not going to work. Hoping to somehow Matrix dodge yeah, the bullet dodge with the, the lead. <laughs> that would have been beautiful if Icon still had been at the barrels. True. If we saw that come in. Maybe dodge to the left one bullet, jump over the next one. It would have been very impressive. Well, it looks like a pause is going to come underway. Yeah, they do have uh, tactical pauses. We actually, I think this is the first tactical pause we've seen. I believe so, yeah. Penta are the ones taking the tactical pause. <laughs> Icons asking if they're upset. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's probably the uh, it's probably Froster's mouse. Oh no, yeah. Well, well, it's I think they said <laughs> no. It's, it is it's actually tactical, tactical this time. time. So there you go. Yeah, so they'll get. I I believe each team has two tactical pauses. Uh, we haven't seen any come out so far. Um, which is a little bit unusual. Because uh, especially in games like we saw 13-2s, 13-1s, 13-8s. Well, the eight, maybe not so much, but 13 twos, when you start losing rounds that consecutively, you'd imagine a tactical pause would come in, if for no other reason but to slow down the momentum of the other team. Yeah, Make yeah. them kind of think about what they're doing, second guess their plays, but I suppose that's not that's not the way it's been working so far. That's possibly what endpoint they're going for here. They want to figure out exactly what they're doing. I mean, they've got a one-round lead, 9-8. They want to get onto double digits now, and they want to make sure that what they do makes sense, I suppose. 
Exactly. I mean, they get to discuss as well whether they want to get that sniper in play. Icons hasn't really been picking it up in the recent rounds because they've been going for quick B plays and oftentimes trying to get onto that B site. The sniper can be pretty useful towards B, but they just decided not to pick it up because they wanted to get those quick trades, I think. It Whereas, worked for them last round, yeah. though, with Icons sitting at the box, popping up and taking well, shots as they crossed over. Unpause comes through, so we'll head back into the action, and we've already got the round coming underway. Let's see what Endpoint decide to switch up. It seems like they're finding most success when they stick together, but Icons with that sniper might try and work an opening over towards B. He's going to be up on towards these boxes. Let's see if he can spot anyone out, but it's instead Sus pushing aggressively, who already gets the first kill. Penta not being prompted to rotate. They're leaving Replan alone on B, and Replan's gone ridiculously aggressively into the house here. He needs to be careful. The shotgun... Oh, that's a tag! Eventually the kill comes in. I feel like that should have been a kill the first time, yeah, but there we him. go. Yeah, gets the kill through eventually, doesn't cost him. And elsewhere, Money, Jay Money um, somehow gets a kill what? through, but wow, Icons with the sniper takes the shotgun, shotgun down up close, and it's just going to be Cinder and Iger on opposite sides of the map in a two on four. That should be a thing every time Jay gets a kill, it just we have a little sound cue. Money! I want it. Someday. Someday we'll have it. One day. Custom sound cues for each player. Let's have a little tag. That'd be pretty cool. Every time you tag someone, money, money. Yeah. They, they should get to pick their own sound cues, as long yeah, as they're not too sure. too ridiculous, you know. <laughs> Within reason. I mean, either way, endpoint up to their 10th round. Only three away from getting their spot in that grand final tomorrow. And an opportunity for revenge as well against That's Avenue. That is very Just true. Sent them down here. And on their allies' side, they'll be hoping that they can continue to keep this up. Again, Icons is picking up the sniper, so we are seeing a few somewhat slower rounds come in, but we've also seen the other players still be willing to go aggressive. As you saw previously, Sus got that opening kill, which made a massive difference over towards that B site. And this time, Icons is going to try and work an opening as he pushed all the way through Coastal. Time Saint taken down low, as is Fancy, but it's Cinder to get the first kill. Saint does eventually get dispatched. Fancy going to try and get the trade. Ooh, the timing not quite there. So Fancy pushing up with a shotgun. I don't think that they're aware of his position then. In the meantime, Sus is going to try and see if he can get a pick onto Replan on the site itself. But if they don't know where Fancy is, he could potentially push towards the site. Looks as though Icons will go down. Push comes in towards that statue. Fancy gives away his position, though. The shotgun going to have to push out quickly here. He's going to get at least one. It's Jay Money, actually, to get that one instead. But stuck in a one versus four, this will not be happening. He has been playing well so far with 21 kills. And ooh, spots the first player. Spray comes in. It's a little bit of an awkward one, but eventually the frag comes in. Jay Money going to be able to bring it back to a 1v3. But with 25 seconds left... So difficult to do anything here. Has to get the bomb planted. Even that will be a tough ask. Fake plant comes in, trying to get another kill out, but he's just taking shots from all angles. And in comes the flank. J Money somehow still alive on 16 HP. Eight seconds, though. This round is donezo. And I think J Money pretty much knows it. There we go. The final kill comes in. Back to a 9-10 scoreline. This looks like it will be another close map. Donzo, the first time I've heard that used in, a, in an official sense. There we go. It, it was Donzo. It That's the official like term for that. It looks like the 19th round is now Donzoed. The 20th is going to be underway very soon. Let's see if Panda can make it on the double digits or if Endpoint are going to walk away with the 11th round for themselves. Looking like pretty standard round. They're throwing the same smokes every round, which is kind of good. I mean, it's keeping Penta guessing. Sometimes they're not capitalizing on them. They're using the right side statue smoke to cross over to B. They threw it this round. They're not intending to cross. And it's actually going to be a battle coming in. Icon's going to be taken out very low. Look at the amount of operator classes. Oh, my God. I've never seen this before. We see Sus, Saints, and Fancy using operator classes. One getting taken down long range. Another one on low HP. The smoke coming down here. This is not going to fare well. Looks like Penta are almost certainly going to equalize the scoreline. Endpoint, as you said, with so many of those close range weapons, not really going to be able to get it done. In a two versus five.
there we go. Extended even further. Puke is finding another kill. So pretty lackluster round from Endpoint, to be honest. They try something different. It doesn't work out whatsoever. So I assume we'll see them back towards a pretty similar buy. Well, not similar buy to this one. A similar buy to their previous ones into the next. There we go. A flawless round for Penta. They don't lose a single player. 10-10. And with Penta being on that favorite axis side, they should be liking their chances. Even though this isn't their map pick, they have been putting in work on this Axis side. And again, we will see snipers on both players. This is the last sniper card for Endpoint, though, which is worth pointing out. Icon's picking that one up. We haven't really seen those snipers get too many opening kills, though. So that could be something to watch out for. That could make a very big difference, because whoever gets the first kill seems to almost always win the round. Yeah, that's pretty true. I mean, we've seen first round opening frags being so important throughout the entirety of this tournament and indeed the competitive Italian scene in general. Crossover here, not smoked, but the allies just moving across. Needlessly, they're not being picked off though. And so getting the opening kill, but it could be traded back by Froster who's close to range with that shotgun. Picking up oh. two kills, the bomb has now dropped. An incredible play by Froster and it's only going to be icons and sus left. They've got to find themselves four kills. One of which is Froster, who's sitting in there with the shotgun. The shotgun picked up by Sus, though. This is going to be pretty good. Two bullets loaded in there. Let's see what he can do with that. Absolutely nothing. Now, the bomb actually dropped even further up the stairs. Icon's hoping to get a decent angle into that window onto Froster, but not looking too good. Ooh. Quick headshot from Icon's. At least showing off his aim. Ooh, Puke is also crosses there. Icon's could have had the chance for the second, but doesn't watch the right position. And as he pushes up close, Froster will be hoping to get a fourth frag through. Switch coming in, Sniper out, misses the shot. Sniper, not the best weapon to take there. The shotgun generally going to be favoured in that fight. And Froster proves that. He gets four kills in the end, stepping up into that round. And heading into round 22, Penta are the ones with the slight lead. 11-10 into their favour. And they only need two more rounds to secure a third here and to make sure we have an even longer day on our hands. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. As if that's something we need. It's already 20 past 11. We're running well over time. But uh, such is to be expected. you got to add an extra, I think, four hours onto every round schedule. Pretty much. <clears throat> the team's also wanting to get this finished quickly, I suppose, so that they... I mean, you're going to have the likes of Avenue sitting at home now. They, I mean, they can be in bed, getting rest, getting practice, reviewing. And these teams still fighting for their spot in that final. So they're going to be at a map disadvantage in the best of five as Avenue come in with one already on the scoreboard as they went straight through the upper bracket. Sind opening up the round a little bit more as the second kill comes in in favor of Penta. Fancy J Money and Icons, the last alive here. They're not going to want to offer Penta the 12th round, but it's going to be pretty difficult as James has already been spotted out. Icon is trying to spam and look how Ooh. close. Oh, oh, he hits him. Doesn't go for the third shot though, unfortunately. And this round being played a little bit too slow by the allies. Icon still in top mid near the spawn area. With such little time left, Jay gets the opening kill, but 32 seconds left. Icon needs to move fast. He's going to be pushing down mid. Making a lot of noise. And oh, the oh, knife oh. coming in from Jay. This could be good, but it's going to be Aga. He's been holding down this stairwell so well. But look at that fancy coming in, jumping up onto the side from the tank. That's going to be a two versus three. How did this happen? Look at this. Penta oh, falling apart. It's only Froster left. He's over towards Midhouse. He's got a shotgun. Three kills to find. Incredible play by the allies. I'm saying they're playing it too slow. I'm clearly wrong. Hey, what do I know? Look, here comes Froster. One kill. He's looking for a second, but the player's already dropped off the side. They're not going to give this away that easily. But Froster, oh. he's sticking it. He's getting lit down very low. And there it is. 11-11. And now two rounds needed. Or we're going to see another overtime. Oh, my God. What is happening? That should not have been an end point round at any point. And like it was said in chat earlier, I don't know who said it, but uh, could this be Penda's endpoint? <laughs> I enjoyed that. Nice. <laughs> I enjoyed well, that pun. Yet again, we are guaranteed a 24th round. We're going the distance here in regulation. The question is, are we seeing another overtime? Are we seeing a win? Are we seeing a third map? So many questions still left to answer. And we'll get to see them answered shortly as we see endpoint. 
Again, going with a fair few arrivals into this one. No sniper, but Sus again opens things up. His entries have been key. You can see he's got 25 kills so far, and he has been certainly on this ally's side the really important player for Endpoint. A man advantage for them to work with. Endpoint can just slow things down. Sus waiting patiently. I don't think a further peek will come through. You can see Penta also not wanting to make any mistakes at this point. They're trying to hold back. They also have two shotguns in place. They can't really go too aggressive. Yeah. They have to hold up close. At the same time, though, Endpoint are going to have to clear these positions. Let's see how they manage to do that. Shout out to Pronic, by the way, for that. Could this be Penta's Endpoint? Saint-6 with a nice shotgun kill, it's looking good. But here comes the uh, smoke from Aga. Gonna be worried now about the site after the last round. And uh, certainly now, as it's only Replan and himself left, oh. rotation's coming around. But be careful, because here is Jay Money picking up one. Money! He's going for the second. The shotgun pushing him down, it's gonna be close range here. Oh, oh. the knife! Money! There it is. Beautiful. It's Absolutely beautiful. It is Endpoint who have the chance to finish off the day. If they take this round, we are done. They will be your finalists. Or Penta could take us to another overtime and try and keep us up as late as possible. Let's see how it's going to play out. Three sniper cards for Penta not being used. They're sticking with the STGs. They're sticking with the shotguns. It all comes down to this. Again, round 24. These teams almost cannot be separated. Do Endpoint have what it takes to bring themselves through? Feel the tension as this round comes into play. Both teams not wanting to make that early mistake. Not seeing too much aggression. Sus just rattling off shots. Just hoping, praying for a lucky opening. If he could get one through the smoke, it would be so, so huge. But that's not going to be coming in the early stages. But it is Jay Money. Money. He gets the first kill. That was Cinder pushing up in towards that statue position. He tried to get aggressive a little bit alone there. Aga is still holding that shotgun on towards A, but the man advantage for Endpoint. They've been consistently good at closing these out. With a minute left on the clock, plenty of time to work with. Can Endpoint secure their spot in that final? Replant by the peek out and oh. get found by Money. Jay is absolutely clearing heads off right now. It's going to be Aga over towards that A side. They know that he's there. He's on 30 HP now. No nades in play on the allied side, so they can't nade him out of that stairwell. The smoke is about to fade, though, and he could be split pretty easily here. Saint-6 got that shotgun ready to go. Fancy playing on the site. Oh, he's lit low again. That's going to prompt Six to push in there, but be careful. Oh, it doesn't matter because here it's only going to be Froster. He's got to find himself four kills. This is looking great for Endpoint. Looking for that second... The second win of the best of three. And if they can grab this, and indeed it looks like they will because it's only Froster. He's got a shotgun. His best chance to go through spawn, try to get a defuse, get on that site, and bring us to overtime. Four kills to be found. He's going to have to go straight through Jay Money. Let's see if he can do it. No, he can't. That's going to be fancy. Finishing off this best of three. 2-0 to end point. As we are going to see them tomorrow taking on Avenue. One more 